Women's History Month is here, and on this channel we remind you about all the hardcore ladies your history book forgot. And how high is the body count for this person today? Define body count. Whenever today's hardcore lady came across a problem, one of two things happened. She was either going to stab it or bet it. Sometimes both in that order. To her, laws and social constructs weren't rules to follow to lead a fulfilling life. It was her bucket list of things to destroy. She led a life so wild, the King of France had to pardon her a** twice. Even today, people aren't sure how many of the stories about her were actually true. I could say that she snuck into a convent once to bang a nun, steal a corpse, and then burn the place down, and it still sounds like something she'd do. She actually did do that. Oh my f***ing god. I'm Vibby. And on this episode of A Space Alien Explains, Julie Dobini. Although Julie was best known for her shenanigans as history's most problematic fave, there's still quite a bit we don't know about her. Hell, her name might not have even been Julie. Also known as Emily, Julie Emily, or in some weird cases Madeline, Dubini was born in Paris in the 1670s. Her father Gaston worked for the Count of Armagnac, one of France's great nobles, and King Louis XIV's master of the horse. Gaston was responsible for training the court pages and made sure his daughter received similar training that was usually reserved for boys. The Dubinis had some wealthy connections, and Julie easily could have lived that real housewife's Paris life if it wasn't for her insatiable urge to shank everything in Sight. Did you say, chat everything in sight? That too. She took up fencing at a young age, which wasn't bizarre for women at the time, but Julie was unusual because she was competing against men. Compared to the pages she was training alongside, she ended up being the best fencer of the bunch. She also started wearing men's clothing, which is something she would continue to do for the rest of her life. Also, she f***ed her dad's boss. Wait, she what? Eventually, Dad's boss found Julie to be way too much to handle, and had her married off to a mild-mannered gentleman who gave her the nickname she would be best known by, La Moupin. But what none of these people realized is that La Moupin got bored of fast. She got bored of her husband, and the affair with her dad's boss, and fixed the problem by running away with a fencing expert named Saran. After Saran killed a guy in a duel, he and La Moupin had to get the f out of Paris. From there, they traveled the French countryside. La Moupon made money by singing about kicking people's asses and then pulling out her sword and proceeding to do so. During one of her demonstrations, some dude in the crowd got sick of La Moupon's sh**, so he accused her of not being a real woman. No woman could be that good with a sword. This was all some con, they were being ripped off, and oh my god, she just took off her shirt. The tits are legit, motherfucker. As it turns out, these performances led to surprising job prospects. La Moupin's voice caught the attention of the Opera de Marseille, and she ended up taking a few roles. Her voice was naturally pleasing, she was physically attractive, and combined with the fact she had a near-photographic memory, she was practically made to be a star. That's all well and good, but where does the nun banging come in? Patience. For you see, La Moupin was getting bored again. But this time she decided she was getting tired of men. Her next lover was the daughter of a merchant. The family wasn't too pleased with the girl's relationship with La Moupin, and had her sent away to a convent in Avignon. But religious institutions are powerless against La Moupin's insatiable libido. La Moupin joined the convent as well, and when God didn't immediately strike her down upon entering the place, she resumed her relationship with her lover. She and her lover escaped thanks to an elaborate scheme which involved acquiring the body of a recently deceased nun, putting it in her lover's bed as a decoy, and then burning down the convent. Now that La Moupin had arson and desecration of a corpse checked off on her bucket list, and a death sentence hanging over her head, it was time to get the f out of Dodge. Again, her relationship with the merchant's daughter didn't last. It was at this point she decided to pursue a career in the Paris Opera. But it's kinda hard to start a singing career when you're a wanted criminal charged with the death penalty. Oh, but remember Dad's boss? The one she banged? He managed to have a chat with King Louis and help get her pardoned. She moved back to Paris and became the opera star known as Mademoiselle Moupin. By the way, she was only 17 at this time. Holy f la Moupin. Even as an opera singer, she continued being her best self, which involved betting or stabbing everything in sight. One night, three men challenged her to a duel at the same time. The reason for the duels varies depending on who you ask, but my personal favorite is that she decided to tongue kiss a girl in front of the entire French royal family, and some noblemen got salty about it. She took them all outside, beat their asses, left them in the street riddled with multiple stab wounds, and nonchalantly went back to the party probably so she could hit on more girls. This is, incidentally, how she got that second pardon. Dueling was illegal in France, but La Moupin was out to fight everyone and didn't give a sh 
There was another guy known as Dalbert who challenged her to a duel, and she ended up skewering him through the shoulder. People need to learn that you have no chance at winning if you sword fight La Mupa. She burned down a nunnery. A goddamn nunnery! Anyway, she felt a little bad about injuring him and decided to pay him a visit. That was really nice of- So she could shag him, of course! Although her romantic relationship with Dalbert was short, they had reportedly remained lifelong friends. La Mupa had many more lovers and many more duels and many more wild stories, but if I were to go through every single one of them, this video would get too long and become a nightmare to edit. TLDR, she fought and f***ed absolutely everyone. No one was safe and people kinda loved her for it. La Mupin is arguably the greatest example of living fast, dying young, and leaving a pretty corpse. She passed away in her 30s from unknown causes. Stories of what the last few years of her life were like vary depending on who you ask. Some say she went back to the convent to spend some time repenting. Others say she was reunited with and lived the rest of her short life quietly with her husband. Oh yeah, you probably forgot she was married the whole time. No worries, she probably did too. Although La Mupin is mostly left as a historical footnote, she did leave us with a wonderful piece of philosophy. If you can't fight it, f*** it. But apparently it works just fine the other way around too. Thanks, La Mupin! Hi everyone! Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. This week's featured fan art is by Pally Mar on Twitter. Link to the artist's page is in the description. And here's some comments from the last video. If this episode made you want to challenge the next person you see to a sword fight, please be sure to drop a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. If you'd like to support the channel, I have art commissions and a Ko-Fi page available. Buy me a coffee and I can make you a little sketch as a way of saying thanks. Links to all that, as well as links to my social media, are in the description. Thank you so much again for watching, and I'll see you real soon.